from the heart of a harsh and sun-beaten world. Come flashes of brilliant color and a thunderous roar. Home to an unexpected ensemble of creatures whose lives are both dramatic and dangerous. For only those tough enough can carve out a life in an oasis of rock and thunder. This is the Akhrabis Falls National Park. It's December, summer in South Africa's vast northern Cape province. This arid region is home to the Ochrabis Falls National Park, which stretches out for 820 square kilometers. Right now, it's the end of the dry season, and no rain has fallen for several months. Not good news for those that live here. In this semi-desert land, temperatures can soar well over 40 degrees Celsius. And the animals need special adaptations to live in the heat. Like the world's tallest mammal, the giraffe. It can survive on little water because of its superb digestion that squeezes the maximum moisture out of its food. Springboks have their own ingenious adaptation to dryland living. They sport a blood flow radiator that circulates blood through their nose, cooling it down before it reaches their heart. For those that live out here, Life consists of limited food and water and extreme heat. Survival is no easy feat. But there is another world in Ochrabis. To find it, one only needs to listen.
in the distance, a quiet rumble. It belongs to a twisting, crashing giant. Ohrabi's waterfall. Its name is derived from a word, Ukurubis, which means place of thunder in the indigenous language of the Nama Khoi. At 60 meters from top to bottom, the waterfall has immense power, even in dry season. enough to hollow out a hole so deep that local legend tells a tale of a great water serpent that guards its mystical depths. The Orange River holds the true strength, however, as evidenced by the dramatic gorge it has cut through the solid granite bedrock beyond the falls. has traveled over 1,500 kilometers to get here, traversing nearly two-thirds of South Africa. Once here, the river snakes through the gorge for 18 kilometers, dropping over 300 meters through a series of rapids as it goes. It is a triumph of water over rock considered the finest example of erosion of granite by water in the world. In seasons of great flood, it's regarded as one of the six great waterfalls on Earth. But now, in the dry season, the falls show just a trickle of their rainy season glory. The giraffe up above can do little more than listen to the roar of the falls. For the sides of the gorge are too sheer for them to descend. In this perilous world of steep rock faces, there is one species that appears in a swarm of biblical proportions.
millions upon millions of black flies fill the sky. The tiny insects breed in the water. Their larvae cling to the rocks while filter feeding in the fast flowing water before hatching and taking to the air. The proliferation of black flies supports another thriving society. The Okhrabi's flat lizard. These kaleidoscopic lizards live in a community of thousands on the sides of the waterfall. Such large numbers are possible due to the abundance of food, black flies. It's a bustling, jostling lizard city, where the males sport rainbow colors to attract females, who are drab by comparison. Here, prime property and status are intricately linked. For the lizards, not all rocky real estate is the same. Some neighborhoods are too sunny. Others too tucked away. This rock face right by the water is ideal territory. Here, the resident swarm of black fly overhead provides an abundance of food. Best hunting ground is hotly contested. Stretches of rock with more available food will ultimately attract more females. So males fight for the best spots. To be the head honcho lizard isn't easy. You need to be tough. And nothing says tough in Lizard City like a multicolored bodysuit. These male Okhrabi's flat lizards take showing off a step further, though. They have an ultraviolet badge on their throats which allows individuals to determine who is the superior specimen without risking potential injury from fighting. Ultraviolet light is a form of radiation that lies beyond the human field of vision. 
and Ohrabi's flat lizards are three times more sensitive to UV light than other lizards. By displaying their dominance badges in a masculine push-up position, male lizards communicate their levels of strength and sexual prowess. But flashy shows don't always guarantee getting the girl. The females don't need bright colors because they hold the power of choice, deciding which males they mate with and when. But the males don't always respect their decisions. The lizard Lotharios can be very pushy. This male wants to mate and attempts to woo the female with an awkward plodding dance. She's unimpressed by his efforts. But he won't take no for an answer and bites her tail as she tries to flee. Luckily, she escapes. This female is not so fortunate. Her missing tail tells of a past harassment. The male forces himself on her, holding fast to her leg as she struggles. She fights back in desperation. Seizing the moment, she shakes him, this time. Encounters like this are an unpleasant reality for female lizards in this crowded rock face metropolis. For the Okhrabi's flat lizard, it's easy to get distracted by the daily dramas of living on top of one another. But letting one's guard down is dangerous around here. For there are always those that would devour a lizard for lunch in the blink of an eye. The slender mongoose is an energetic and industrious hunter, eating small mammals, insects, and of course, lizards. The colorful males are most at risk, while the females' bland brown markings help them blend into the rocks. But the little lizards are no easy target, even for the lithe mongoose. Eventually, he gives up. He'll have to work harder to catch these fleet-footed flat lizards. The presence of the mongoose has attracted the attention of another one of the Akhrabi's most abundant inhabitants. 
the rock hyrax. These small furry mammals are neighbors to the lizards. They may look like giant hamsters, but their closest living relative is actually the elephant. Like the pachyderms, hyrax tusks develop from their incisors and not their canines. Hyraxes live in large harems of females, overseen by a territorial male. The male in charge here sits high up on the rocks, on the lookout for danger. His offspring spend most of the time with their mum. And the whole family lays out on the rocks to warm themselves. Adults are lethargic by nature, and even the youngsters who are still learning the important lessons of climbing are not all that boisterous. Hyraxes prefer to take life at a relaxed pace. They are vegetarian and eat a wide variety of plants, including grasses and foliage from trees. While a lot of what they eat is low in nutrients, their hardy digestive systems can accommodate even the toxic euphorbia, which is poisonous to humans. At the height of summer, there's not a lot of good grazing around, so they head off in search of something more appealing. Leaving the safety of their rocky hideouts is a risky venture. But the top of the gorge offers a treat worth the trek. delicious green leaves and red flowers of the Karoo Boer bean tree. Hyraxes are good climbers and the offer of juicy leaves drives a few of the adults up the tree. First, the youngsters are hesitant, eating only what they can reach on their hind legs. They soon realize it's safe enough though, and follow the adults up. The activity on the tree has caught the eye of a very dangerous onlooker. The Vero eagle is a hyrax's worst nightmare. It's a very large bird of prey that specializes 
in hunting hyraxes. As the hyraxes focus on finding the choicest leaves, they remain oblivious to their nemesis. are often seen in pairs, riding thermal air currents gracefully through the sky. They soar above the hyraxes, watching for the right target with acute telescopic eyesight. Hyraxes are alert, and a sentry spots the eagles. An alarm call sends the chubby little creatures scuttling for cover. The razor-beaked raptor will have to look elsewhere for a meal. Out here on the rocky surface above the gorge, it's an arid and treacherous world. Exposed to the elements for millennia, the granite boulders lie cracked and shattered. Sometimes they reveal their precious insides, quartz crystals. Granite can comprise up to 20% of this abundant mineral. This field of quartz stones is the result of millions of years of erosion. The rock's pink hue shows that it's rose quartz, colored by trace amounts of iron, titanium, or manganese. It appears that one of the pieces of quartz is alive. The stone grasshopper is a master of camouflage, blending in perfectly with its environment. There's a reason for the grasshopper to put so much effort into trying to remain unseen. A terrifying predator roams these parts. African burrowing scorpion has powerful pincers and a stinging tail which would quickly end the grasshopper's life. The grasshopper avoids detection 
due to its incredible disguise. This armoured cricket doesn't have the same quality of camouflage as the stone grasshopper. It relies on its spiked back for protection. but its rambling, awkward movement doesn't go unnoticed. The scorpion is onto it. Capture is swift. For the scorpion, this is a big meal, which he devours meticulously with his mandibles. It looks like the armoured cricket wasn't armoured enough in the end. For the black fly, attacks come from every angle. Lizards from below, and swallows from above. For the white-throated swallows, agility is their key when hunting black fly down by the falls. They congregate in their thousands, picking off the tiny insects with pinpoint precision. This pair, like all white-throated swallows, prefers privacy and has chosen a secluded cliff face to build its nest. They construct their nests mostly of mud, so protection from the rain is imperative. These experienced parents have opted for an overhanging rock face where their nest is shielded from the elements. swallow squawks loudly for food. Growing fast, it needs a constant supply of meals, an exhausting delivery schedule for the parents. It will soon fledge and flaps its developing wings to build strength. 
It must be cautious, however, because it can't fly yet, and if it falls, it will land in the river. It can't seem to understand why its mum would come so close to it, but not deliver any food. Finally, the ravenous chick's pleas are answered, and mum regurgitates a bellyful of black flies into its mouth. There are other birds that eat the black flies. The weaver has a different approach to catching the little insects. It uses its considerable skills as a rock climber to pick off the flies that land on the sides of the rock. While it might not be as agile on the wing as the swallow, it's far better at making nests. Where the river widens and calms, tough green reeds grow, which the weaver favors for its building materials. The weaver is named after its incredible ability to weave nests with only its beak as a tool. It is the male that does the laborious and intricate task of nest building. He must pay close attention to the shape and durability of its construction. For it's far more important than merely being a roof over his head. The quality of his nest will determine if he can find a mate. A female comes over to inspect his handiwork. While it seems like he's made a sturdy and attractive abode, she doesn't appear impressed. After all his hard work, it would be a pity to lose her interest. He performs a wing-flapping dance as a final resort. but she leaves without ceremony. He'll have to refine either his house building or dancing techniques, or both. All that building and dancing makes the weaver hungry. Luckily for him, the summer season brings with it one of his favorite foods. The sweet wild figs are finally ripe. They are a delicious and nutrient rich food for the weaver, but they make for messy eating. And he needs to clean his beak properly after each fig. His activity in the branches is providing a windfall for a lucky few waiting on the rocks below.
the figs fall like manna from heaven for the hungry lizards. The fruits are big and juicy and much easier to catch than the tiny buzzing flies. The weaver goes about his business, unwittingly providing the lizards with a rare and delectable lunch. The lizards also need to clean up after the sticky fig. The weaver isn't the only one of the lizard's neighbors that presents an opportunity to score a bite to eat. Hyrax's homes are a haven for flies, which are attracted by the large middens or communal toilets that the herbivores create. These common flies are bigger than the tiny black flies of the waterfall and make for more of a meal. For the opportunistic lizards, it's an offer too tempting to pass up. even if it means getting perilously close to the Hyraxes. While some of the females, like this one, are interested in finding a square meal, things are heating up for the males back on the rock face. Bright colors might be enough to separate the men from the boys, but on this stretch of prime hunting ground, everyone is big. It's going to take more than a few push-ups and the flash of a neck badge to determine who's the boss around here. Two large males face off. They circle each other, showing the full underside of their bellies in what is termed a ventral display. These two are evenly matched, and neither is backing down. The battle is fierce, but short-lived. The victor remains, proudly surveying his territory. Little does he know that not far away another male is committing a heinous indiscretion. The offending male is neither big nor brightly colored. Yet he has convinced this female to mate. How? He did it by cross-dressing. By imitating the dull coloring of a female, he was able to slip unnoticed into the territory of the larger male, who was so busy fighting off rivals that he didn't notice the cross-dresser, until it was too late. 
This ingenious reproductive strategy shows that around here, brawn doesn't always come out on top. It takes brains to survive in Rock City. The Okhrabis Falls provides a unique opportunity for species like the flat lizard to thrive in unparalleled numbers. Cradled in this gorge, life proliferates due to an unexpected abundance in an otherwise arid world. This extreme concentration of life has given rise to all manner of creativity and ingenuity to ensure survival. But here, as it is across the natural world, change is inevitable. Already the water levels of the falls have begun to rise, fed by distant rains. The water engulfs territories males have fought so hard to protect. They can do nothing but look on. This is the nature of Ahrabis, a place of flowing water and weathered granite. But there is plenty of rock around. And as long as the black flies fill the sky, the future of the Ahrabis flat lizard is secure. <laughs>